and Johnny has found some ice gems <laughs> and gummy bears. So he's going to be very happy. And look at the size of these super-sized leaves. <laughs> Last time we were here in Singapore, the jewel wasn't open and the crowning centerpiece of the jewel is the massive indoor waterfall just behind us, which is absolutely spectacular. Hey everyone and welcome to our channel. We are Hannah and Johnny, two travellers on an endless adventure. In 2017, we started finding our adventure to travel full time. Since then, we've lived in a camper van with our cats, learnt to surf and even moved to Cornwall. Hit the subscribe button to join us each week for a new episode of Finding Our Adventure as we search for adventures big and small. Welcome to this week's episode of Finding Our Adventure and this week we are in Singapore. We're so excited to be here. We've just come down to Gardens of the Bay this evening to watch the light display and it's just behind me here. It looks like Avatar and we are so excited to be back and take you guys along for the ride. We've just watched the light show here at the Super Tree Grove in Gardens by the Bay. We were last here in 2018, early 2018, and it definitely feels a lot bigger and a lot more impressive than it was last time. I've just Googled it and it looks like they've opened another Super Tree with the obs observation deck. So it definitely feels bigger than it did last time, but we're not quite sure if they've added more or anything. But it's just a, it's got a real wow factor and the music was incredible and the whole light display was amazing. Um, but we've had a more than a 30 hour travel day now, so we're pretty tired. So we're gonna head back to the hotel and get some sleep and then we'll show you more of Singapore tomorrow. Good morning from a lovely day here in Singapore. Behind me is actually where we're staying. So we're staying at the Fullerton Hotel, which is a pretty iconic building, as you can see behind me. It's got a lot of history. We're gonna show you around it later, but this morning we're gonna go and explore the rest of the city. One thing that I've noticed since being back here, especially in the center of the city, is actually how chilled and relaxed it is for a city. And it's really like, actually quite peaceful and everyone's really happy very clean and uh, it just doesn't feel like your typical city everyone's very calm people are able to like ride bikes along the Singapore River and it's just got a really nice feel what's really cool about being in Singapore at the moment is that the F1 was only here a couple of weeks ago or so and you can still see behind me here large sections of the track are still um, up for seeing they're starting to take a lot of them down now but it's really cool to be able to see the street circuit as it would have been during the race and even from our hotel balcony there's a uh, track goes right underneath our room. We've just made it to Armenian Street and this is actually the first botanical gardens in Singapore and it was actually closed down in the 1800s and then the locals here decided that they wanted to try and keep it going so there's like these massive crates of plants lining up the streets behind me and then they go further on into the park. We've just come along this street here and they've got two temples. They've got this Chinese temple and also a Hindu temple down at the bottom. And it's really interesting because they've got all these stalls behind us where they're buying um, offerings and incense and stuff and they take it into the temples and they burn it and they, and they, I guess, and they're doing their prayers. But it's really busy along here and all the people are coming to worship this morning. So we've just come across some durian which is behind me and it's very um, strong smelling fruit. Some people either love it or they hate it and you can really smell it. It actually smells quite sweet to me but um, we've tried it before and it kind of tastes a bit like cheese. One thing we really love about Singapore is how green everything is and this building behind me here is a really good example of how there's buildings with trees and plants growing all over it and it just makes a, it feel like a tropical jungle, it's really cool. Sweaty mess. 
we have just made it to Little India, which is one of our favorite places that we visited the first time we came to Singapore. And this is where a lot of the early um, Indian immigrants settled in Singapore. And already the building style is very different from the rest of the city. There's the smell of spices and incense in the air. So it's just a very different vibe and it's something more busy as well. I'm very sweaty but we've just come off the main street and we've come into some of the quieter streets where there's some really beautiful colourful buildings. They're painted in all sorts of different colours and it's so nice to look at. We're just going to wander around here and uh, maybe get a nice cold drink. So this colourful building behind us here, the one that we were just filming at with Hannah, is, the, is actually the last surviving Chinese um, villa in Little India and Little India built its industries on the cattle um, trade and it's just really cool. So they used to work alongside each other like the Chinese and the Indians and this is last one. We've just walked down to the Sultan Mosque which is just behind me up here and back in 2017, 2018 when we travelled Southeast Asia for six months we actually stayed uh, near the Sultan Mosque. We stayed in a, um, a hostel which was the, one of the cheapest accommodations we could find at the time. It was actually really nice, um, but now the contrast of the place we're staying in this time is, um, is so different. So we probably after we've explored this area, we're gonna go back to the hotel and give you a little tour. We're just walking around Kampong Glam area and it's really colourful, very vibrant. It's a really good place to come shopping and there's lots of like really nice restaurants. This area feels so different in contrast to Little India. It's got a completely different feel and it's very beautiful everywhere you look. We've just come back to the hotel after a morning of exploring the city and it's really nice because it's got quite humid but a little bit overcast now and I'm really excited to get into the pool. They've got this beautiful infinity pool which is on level two and it overlooks the Singapore River and all of the beautiful skyline. on the way back to our room that afternoon tea is almost finished in the club lounge area which we have got access to and um, so we quickly rushed down to the Straits Club which is where they serve afternoon tea and look how pretty all of this is we've got lots of different little sandwiches and cakes scones and then I think this is like a little marzipan eggplant and um, I asked for recommendations on tea and I've gone, I think she recommended the blue, blue Moon tea. It's like a jasmine tea and it smells really, really good. And Johnny has found some ice gems and gummy bears. 
so he's going to be very happy. Right, we thought it would be a good time to give you a quick room tour of the room that we're staying in at the moment here at the Fullerton Hotel in Singapore. The room that we're in is one of the Marina Bay View rooms and it is spectacular. So as you walk in, you have got plenty of storage, got a place for your suitcase and also some wardrobe space here and a full length mirror. Then opposite the storage space, we have this lovely sized bathroom, which has got a big tub, shower, and then you've got a really nice sink, plenty of space for all your toiletries and a shower. Or did I already say that? I don't know. And then here is the toilet. And this is one of the fanciest toilets I've ever used in my life. It's got a, it's basically electric self-cleaning and it's got its very own bidet. And you have a little control panel on the side. And it's a heated seat. Oh, is it? I've not even tried that. And it's heated. So, you know, if you don't like the seat cold, you can warm it up. <laughs> Then moving outside of the bathroom and the entrance way, we've got this huge room, which has got a lovely big TV. And then you've got a table and seating area here. Perfect for getting on with work. And we've also got a tea and coffee station over here with a fully stocked mini bar which is great. And they also have a book about all the history of the hotel, which I'll tell you a little bit about more in a minute. So when we arrived yesterday, we were greeted to some lovely complimentary fruit. So this is a dragon fruit, I think. It's really tasty. And the inside is not what you'd expect. It's like white with um, little black seeds. And then the rest of the fruit you probably are familiar with. And then there's also some lovely chocolates. One of them's in the shape of a butterfly. Don't know if you want to see that. Ooh, <laughs> and there's also you can buy your very own Fullerton Teddy, very cute, <laughs> just in case you want to have a little memento. So opposite the TV and desk space, we have got a lovely bed and it's also got a little like chaise lounge sofa just in front of it. So there's space to just chill and it's just really, really comfortable. It's one of those beds that you just fall into and the pillows are super soft. Okay, so one of the really cool things about this room, I don't think we've ever stayed in a room where this you can do this, but at night, if you're really lazy and you're already in bed and you forgot to close the curtains, there is a button where you can close them and I think you can close both of them. Yeah, close and open. How do I open it? Oh, there we go. Oh. Okay, so guys, this is the best part of this room. When we arrived yesterday, it was jaw dropping. Like I couldn't believe it. I almost, I almost, I got really teary because it was really, really beautiful. So in this room, we got our very own balcony overlooking Marina Bay. So I'm gonna let the camera speak for itself. So this is what makes this room so special. Um, there's only a few select rooms within the hotel that have a view of Marina Bay. So it's a really great central location. So you're right in the city center. You're not far to be able to walk to most of the main attractions here in the city. So we've had a great time exploring and haven't really had to use much public transport. But um, yeah, just really beautiful. And we'll also show you the view at night because everything just lights up and it's a whole other world. So you can also see the Formula One circuit track down there. Um, I think Johnny has mentioned it a few times because he loves Formula One. And they've just started taking it away, but this would have been such a cool view to watch it from up here. So one really cool thing about the Fullerton is that it has quite an interesting history and it's an iconic uh, monument within the city itself. And it used to be a post office and a lot of the land in front of the Fullerton Hotel and the Fullerton Bay Hotel, which is just over there, 
They own quite a lot of the stretch along this Marina Bay area um, and they have got some really cool, so one of the really cool interesting facts is that there is a point within the hotel where everything from Singapore is measured from, so it's basically the exact centre point of Singapore. We have just made it back to the gardens by the bay and it's really cool here it's absolutely iconic part of um, singapore and most of it's actually free to get into so where we were last night the super tree grove that's free to come and see um, walking around all these gardens now is free to get into there is the cloud uh, forest i think it's called or the cloud dome and flower forest or flower dome and you have to pay to go into those and they're like the big greenhouses but the rest of it i think is just free to walk around and enjoy the marina bay sands hotel is a landmark in singapore and what's really cool about this hotel is that they have a sky top pool which has got incredible views overlooking the city the gardens here are absolutely massive and what i find mind-boggling is how they're free there's so much to do and see apart from the super trees there's all these boardwalks to walk around as well there's loads of places to sit and just relax and escape the city life and it's just such a cool place to see we're getting close to the super tree grove now and it's starting to feel like we're getting into a jungle just behind us here and it's starting to feel like a jungle as well the smells and the humidity it's all just coming uh, ramping up so this park is really cool because it's kind of like a juxtaposition with like the jungle and all the greenery just kind of like thriving among the city. So like here, there's a really cool perspective because all of the greenery is kind of like in the foreground and then it's like the city skyline just popping above. So it's like the urban versus jungle feel is just really, really cool how it works really well together. Just working our way deeper into that jungle now and we are almost at the super trees where we were last night and we're gonna see them in the daytime. And look at the size of these super-sized leaves. <laughs> it's a totally different experience coming to the Super Tree Grove during the day. It's so much quieter. Everybody comes to the light show. There's still a few people around, probably exploring the um, domes as well. And there's also the, um, the Super Tree Skywalk viewing platform just above us there. But yeah, definitely much quieter to come during the day. The super trees are also um, self-powered by solar panels, so they, they all have solar panels on the roof, I think, and that generates enough electricity to power all of the lights and everything at night time, so they're completely sustainable, and they just look pretty incredible too. As you're walking around there's lots of signs about the types of wildlife that you can see around here and last time when we came we actually spotted some otters and you can, apparently you're very lucky if you spot an otter here they also have turtles and a lot of fish in the in the river as well so we've come to Lao Passat which is basically a really busy food area so they have tons of different food stalls you can choose from and Johnny was craving some satay so we followed the smell of the smoke and we just stopped at satay number eight apparently it's the best in this area there was a really long queue so we're taking that as a good sign and we've just been given one of these buzzers to wait so we've been told that we have to wait about half an hour or something like that but it's a really cool atmosphere here and the food everywhere smells so good so our food has arrived we went with 15 of each so we've got 15 chicken and then 15 beef and then it comes with like these sauces smells really good that's really good oh. 
We have just made it to Chinatown. The food we just had, the satay sticks, were absolutely delicious. Highly recommend that if you're in um, Singapore. Jet lag is starting to catch up with us now, so we're both pretty tired, and the battery of this camera is about to die. So I think we're going to have a little look around Chinatown quick, and then we're going to head back to our hotel, and we'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, and this is our last day in Singapore, and we've just made it to the Jewel, which is actually just within the airport. So we've dropped our bags off, and we're going to go and explore. Last time we were here in Singapore, the jewel wasn't open and the crowning centerpiece of the jewel is the massive indoor waterfall just behind us, which is absolutely spectacular. So the waterfall is actually called the Rain Vortex, which is really cool. And apart from that, we're gonna have a little look around now, but it looks like it's kind of like a giant mall here at the airport. And to get in, if you're flying here, you actually have to leave the terminals and get a train or walk across to the jewel. Um, it's really easy to do. We've left our bags. It was quite expensive to leave our bags, but it's definitely worth it. So we don't have to drag those around with us for the next few hours. And yeah, we're going to make the most of it. We've almost made it to the top level now and the view from up here is absolutely spectacular. It's like being in a rainforest. It's so humid and warm. And we've got the plants all around us as well. It's absolutely incredible. So we've just come to the top floor and there's loads of other activities you can do, but you have to pay for them. So there's like a treetop walk, like a maze, um, a walking net, there's loads of crazy things we can do. When we were researching about coming to the Jewel, I read online that they recommend to spend at least five hours here. And I thought that was a bit overkill at the time, but definitely when you get here, if you want to do all the attractions and pay for all the extras, you could definitely spend five hours or more here. Um, it's pretty big. The architecture of the jewel is absolutely incredible. I love how it hangs and it doesn't seem like there's anything really supporting it. But our time here in Singapore has come to an end. We've absolutely loved every moment of it being back here. It's absolutely incredible, this country. And we've got a flight to catch now. So don't forget to check out next week's episode to see where we're heading next. And we'll see you then.